treat me like a cat. I'll purr and I'll do what I know I must. But of course, I, I like to like, otherwise I'll claw, you see. Yeah. My grandmother used to say, he never chooses a Sicilian heart small as a Mount Etna. From time to time, it's got to blow up like Mount Etna. And she used to say, never forget people who are nice and kind to us. And with lightning glasses, we never forget those who are not. You do have a very uh, fierce reputation. Have I? Mm. Oh, that's useful. I mean, I want, where do you collect this reputation from? I didn't collect it from anywhere. It grows out of me. It's part of me. Well, let's, so let, now let's... Well, I'm, I'm very much my mother's son, you know. And equally my father's son. He was, he was known as the worst simple man in Bombay. You were born in Chingford, though. The, the books of reference have been deliberately misled as to dates and places. I am not going to clarify that to anybody or, or for any reason whatever. One or two people know the facts. Among my friends, one or two only. It's no good you're trying to pump, pump them because I'm under direst penalties not to reveal them. I have a mania for privacy. Uh, let me think. When I was 15, my old master said to me, look, he said, you ought to start composing. Oh, I said, I never had any thought of doing anything, this sort of something. But he said, look here, uh, forget all the things I thought of. I went to all the ordinary routine, you see. Uh, uh, four, part, five, part, harmony, counterpoint, strict and free. I've got it. I've got it. Thank God, I've gotten it all now, various species. So I thought, all right, when I started writing sort of short cadences, you know, very much a la Ravel, and he said, oh, yes, yes, you must go on. So the next thing was a concerto. I never had an, never had an lesson in orchestration in my life, and yet people say that I got a marvellous command on an orchestration. Uh, a musician playing with just watching my score said that this score's a marvel. Whether it is or not, I don't know. I don't care if it is or not. I've had to go on writing, you see, like this. I have an enormous number of uh, multitude of works. That thing is, that cupboard there is full of enormous scores. Um, one work, a symphonic high mass, which, which requires a chorus of 500. Of course, they'll never be performed. It doesn't matter to be a scrap. Um, I, I was put in the world to write them, so that's that. What happens to me after I'm, I, I can't count, it doesn't matter to me two hoots. I don't care a damn. But wouldn't, wouldn't you like tomorrow night to get into a motor car and go to London and hear that work done in the Royal Albert Hall? I wouldn't cross the road. Honestly. You know, I shall, if there are going to be any forms of I shall never be there. I'm not going to make an exhibition of myself, a rare issue, not on your life. No, no fear. In a concert hall, among them, to smell this, their spiritual and moral aura. It's, it's a real stench, you know. Well, that's that. Go on. It's only what is called labour, not what is called real work. I have not found any member of what are called the working classes who has the faintest notion of the toil, mental and, yes, physical, of writing down a few pages of a complex modern orchestral score, let alone hundreds of them. The preliminary years of drudgery on top of innate ability, plus unlimited and unpaid overtime at all times. One that once said to me, but naturally you can't understand our point of view, you are not a member of the working classes. No, indeed, I spat at him, I'm not, I work. I went on, when your hours, when not your working, are finished, off you go, gleefully boozing or hauling on both. When my work is finished, I am so drained and exhausted that I can't sleep for nights on end. You can't understand that either, can you, honest Tyler? Popularizing the arts, bringing art to the people, spreading culture as it were muck or weed killer. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample under their feet and turn again and rend you the immorality of artists. When people in England talk about immorality, they never mean the major sins, lying, treachery, cruelty, envy, malice, avarice. It is also only an only sex. A classic example of this occurred in the courts some years ago. Prosecuting counsel said of some scoundrel of a woman charged with forgery, perjury, swindling, and robbing her benefactors that there was no suggestion against her moral character. Now, artists, we all know, are hot stuff, dirty dogs, live in unmarriage, seduce other men's wives, and far more freely than all, even sometimes get involved in nameless scandals, unspeakable vices, and so on, with relish and unction. The fact that in any village you could, if your nosiness was supported by a sufficiently pornographic and virginal persistence, find all these things going on all round you among people with the remotest connection with art or artists, doesn't in the least lessen the kick you get from occasionally finding your own swinishness in circles far above the shadow of your normal night. It is the rarity of an occurrence that makes it noticeable, and particularly to the eyes of malice, for as has been said, it makes Caliban furious to see his own face in a mirror. 